Good morning. Happy 4th of July. Running a little late this morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Ooh, I had to run to the grocery store this morning. That's why I'm late. Uh, it's better to go early in the morning. There's a mask order here in Texas. Uh, and there's hardly anybody at the store early in the morning. But uh, anyway, I picked up some Paul Newman's. Uh, Paul, it's in a brown box. Has his face on it. <laughs> oh, some bold blend or something. I don't know. I like it. It's good stuff. So, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and also, like to say, God bless America. Uh, we are by far the most blessed nation. And uh, it just seems like it's falling apart at the seams. But, uh, yeah. Praying, uh, praying, for, praying for better results. Praying for a better the rest of 2020. Because so far, 2020 has not been all that exciting. So, anyway, but God is still good. God is in control. So, I don't think I said it, but I'll say it again if not. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the psalmody this morning, we're going to start off with Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. And as always, may God bless the reading of His Word. The Mighty One, God the Lord speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before Him is a devouring fire. Around Him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that He may judge His people. Gather to me, faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare His righteousness. For God himself is judge. Mm. All this Saharan dust that's coming through here has just made my throat just real itchy and dry last week or so. All right, the Old Testament. We're back in Joshua. We're going to chapter 10, verses 1 through 25. As soon as Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had captured Ai and had devoted it to destruction, doing to Ai and, and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, he feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, like, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai and all its men were warriors. So Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to, sent to Ohem, king of Hebron, to Piram, king of Jarmuth, and Japhia, king of Lachish, and to Debar, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us strike Gibeon. For it has made peace with Joshua and with the people of Israel. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered their forces and went and went up with all their armies and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal, saying, Do not relax your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. Not a man of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel who struck them with the great blow at Gibeon and chased them by the way of, of the ascent of Beth Horon and struck them as far as Ezekiah and Machadai. I think that's how you pronounce it. And as they fled before Israel, while they were going down, down the ascent of Beth, 
Beth Horon, the Lord drew down large stones from heaven on them as far as Ezekiah, and they died. There were more there were more who died because of the hailstones than the sons of Israel killed with the sword. Wow. At that time Joshua spoke to the Lord in the in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ijalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jashar, The sun stopped in the midst of heaven, and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. And there has been no day like it before or since, when the Lord heeded the voice of man. For the Lord fought for Israel. So Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp at Gilgal. These five kings fled and hid themselves in the caves at Mechadai. Mechada. I'm going to say Mechada. I think that, that, yeah. And it was told to Joshua. The five kings had been, had been found in the cave at Mechada. And Joshua said, Roll large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. But do not stay there yourselves. Pursue your enemies. Attack their rear guard. Do not let them enter their cities, for the Lord your God has given them into your hand. When Joshua and the sons of Israel had finished striking them with a great blow until they were wiped out, and when the remnant of, of that remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, then all the people returned safe to Joshua in the camp at Makkada. Not a man moved his tongue against any people of Israel. And then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring those five kings out to me from the cave. And they did so, and brought those five kings out to him from the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And when they brought those kings out to Joshua, Joshua summoned all the men of Israel, and said to the chiefs of the, of the men of war who had gone with them, Come near, and put your feet on the necks of these kings. And then they came near and put their feet on their necks. And Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid or dismayed. Be strong and courageous, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Interesting. That's a great story. Oh, go on to the New Testament now. We're in uh, Acts chapter 11. We're going to go 19 through 30. And this is uh, concerning the church at Antioch. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, also preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and the great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he had came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarshish to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people, and in Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. Now when these days, now in these days prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one, one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit, that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. And this is the word of the Lord. In the prayer for today, let us pray. Merciful Lord, 
your church expanded from Jerusalem to Antioch, where those who believed in Jesus were first called Christians. Through your servants Barnabas and Paul, Gentiles were evangelized and now called by your name. Give us courage to speak your name even in the face of persecution, so that all might hear your holy word and come to the knowledge of the truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray you're all doing well. Uh, we're doing well on this end. And um, I hope you're staying staying safe and social distancing and all that good stuff. But with that, I hope you have a fantastic 4th of July as we celebrate our independence. And uh, and looking forward to better days to come. So with that, I want to go ahead and sign off for today. Y'all have a fantastic weekend. And so with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And God bless. We'll see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word.